Amen. Turn with me to Revelations chapter 16. I want to preach on a subject today. I don't know, you don't hear much about it. And we need to hear much about it. Because the Word of God speaks about it. Did you know one-fourth of the Bible is prophecy? One-fourth of the Bible talks about end times. I want to ask you today, are you ready for Jesus to come back today? Because that's what I'm preaching on today. Now I am a pre-tribulationist and I know there's different viewpoints and good arguments on both sides. And I do preach from a pre-trib uh, belief. But the most important thing, whether it be pre, mid, post, doesn't matter. What matters is Jesus Christ is coming back. But before he does, there is a day coming and it's Armageddon and that's what I'm gonna be preaching on in the next few minutes. I want to ask you something uh, very important here. How many of you know about a thing called Armageddon? You know, you don't hear modern preachers preach it anymore. You don't hear the liberals even talk about it anymore. It's all warm and fuzzy stuff. But let me tell you, a day of judgment is coming upon the world. And it's coming upon an unbelieving world. But I'm going to show you a way out. His name is Jesus Christ. Amen? amen. How many of you are saved? Say amen. amen. How many of you are looking forward to Jesus coming back to take you home? Amen. Then you are the ones that can praise God and realize that you're not going to be part of what's coming on the scene of the world today. You see, God is coming back to judge an unbelieving world. Now let me tell you something. There's only two sides of the fence that you're on. You're either saved and born again and you live it or you're unsaved and you're lost and you don't live it. And I hope you're all on the side that you live for Jesus Christ. So let's see what the Bible says about it. And remember one thing. Remember a verse, Psalms 9, 17 says the wicked will be cast into hell and, so, and those nations that forget God. Well, let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. America has forgotten God. We need to put God back in our schools. We need to put God back in our government. We need to put God, believe it or not, back in our churches. Today, we don't need any nilly, willy-nilly preaching we need to preach the word of God. So let's see what it says in Revelation 16, verses 14 and 16. I encourage you, for your first time visitors, you'll find the verses in your bulletins. Don't ever take a pastor's word for it. I want you to take the word of God and take it home with you. So let's see what Revelation says. For they are spirits of demons, performing signs which go out to the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Behold, I am coming as a thief. Blessed is he who watches and keeps his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. And they gathered them together in the place called, in Hebrew, Armageddon. Lord be with the message today. Hallelujah. Amen. The seventh bowl is the climax of all of Revelation's judgments. It is done. This is God's final act of judgment before Christ comes. This battle called Armageddon is near the city of Megiddo. It's southeast of the mar uh, modern port of Haifa, which guarded a large plain in northern Israel. From a human viewpoint, it appears that the armies of the nations are gathered on their own. But John makes it clear that this military movement is according to God's plan. Now let me tell you something about this battle. It's not an everyday battle nation against nation. This battle is nations against God himself. It's an unbelieving armies gathered together and it's a strike against God. But guess what? They're on the losing side. 
In Revelation 19, the word of God makes it clear that we will be coming back with Jesus on that day and he will defeat the Antichrist and his armies. How many of you are looking forward? How many of you own horses? Do you know you're going to be riding white horses? Can you imagine me, the Lone Ranger? I'm a killer. Did I just backslide? But let me say, tell you something. Let's see what the Bible says. Now you'll find prophecy that talks about this battle in Joel chapter 3, Zechariah 14, Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, Revelations abounds in it and many other places in the word of God. Now, if you think God said that many times, you're gonna believe it, amen? And yet you have modern preachers who will not talk about it. They will not talk about judgment. There is no judgment. Everything's okay. Everybody's going to heaven. Well, let me tell you something. The word of God says it. The word of God says judgment is coming and we need to avoid it. And his name is Jesus Christ. Now we can either believe the modern preachers or we can believe the word of God, which one will you choose? And I'm gonna give you the verses today to where you can do the research on your own. What does the Bible say? Number one, the first, during this time, which comes at, at the end of the seven year tribulation, which the Bible talks about in Jeremiah 30 verse seven, uh, Jacob's trouble, and it talks about the day that God is coming to judge an unbelieving world. Now note I said unbelieving world. But you brothers and sisters have passed from judgment unto eternal life. Amen? If you've been washed in the blood of the Lamb, you do not need to fear what I am about to preach. If you're not washed in the blood of the Lamb, you have a lot to fear about. So let's go through this verse by verse and see what God has to say. Number one, final judgment has come. If you look at Psalms 96, 13, Old Testament, this says, for he is kind, for he is coming to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness and the people with his truth. Now I notice judgment. God is coming. First, God came as a lamb to save the world, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He came to die for you. He came to die for me. He shed his blood for us. And, but now he's coming back as a judge. First, he came as a lamb, and now he's coming in this future time as a lion. Hallelujah, amen. I love the unbelievers and the atheists that run around and they say there is no judgment. It's all make-believe. It's all fairy tale. Let me tell you, if God said it, I believe it. And the word of God says it, but he also says, Christian, you have nothing to worry about because you are covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. Notice he said he is coming. Nothing can stop that at this time. He shall judge the world. Notice that word world. He's talking about the unbelieving world and the people with his truth. In Psalms, your next reference verse, take a look at it. Psalms 98, 9, it says this, for he is coming to judge the earth with righteousness. He shall judge the world and the people with equity. Amen. Let me tell you something. When people sin, there is judgment. When people fall in and practice sin, there is judgment. When people accept Jesus and what he did on the cross, there is salvation. Hallelujah. Amen. People say, I worry about Armageddon. Well, you know how to stop worrying? Accept the remedy. Accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you will have nothing to fear. In Psalms 56, 11, he said, what can man do to me? I have nothing to fear. Hallelujah. Amen. It's high time we start fearing God and put God first place in our lives. Hallelujah, amen, that's what the Bible talks about. Next, it's a fearful judgment, it will be. In Hebrews 10, 27, but a certain fearful expectation of judgment and fiery indignation which will devour the adversaries. Hallelujah, amen. At one time, you and I were enemies to the cross. You'll read this in Ephesians chapter two and many other places 
where we were enemies. But thank God when you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, He has reconciled us back to Him. And you know why? Because He loved you. You know why? Because He died for you. You know why? Because He arose and went to heaven for you. And you know why? Because He's coming back for you one day. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18, and 1 Corinthians 15, 52 through 58, Jesus Christ is coming at the rapture to take you and I home, hallelujah, one day. Amen. You always heard me joke, I, man, one day I won't have to go back to Fernley. One day I'm going home to be with Jesus. Can you imagine what a great day that will be? Finally, we're gonna see our Savior. Finally, we're gonna see the Jesus, the God that loved you, that died for you, that arose for you, and he's coming back for one reason, because he loved you, hallelujah, amen. That's what the word of God says. But for the unbelievers, for those that have laughed and scoffed at the cross, for those that have rejected the Savior and said, no, I don't want nothing to do it, they need to read Hebrews 10, 29. He says, what sort of judgment upon them for those that have insulted the Holy Spirit of God? That's what that verse says. That have trodden underfoot the blood of Jesus Christ. They are the ones that need the fear. They are the ones that are going to face this judgment. As we read on Hebrews 10, 31, it is a fearful thing to fall in the hands of the living God. Hallelujah, amen. God is alive. How many of you went through that time where the God is dead experience? How many of you are old enough to remember that? Oh, come on. Don't be afraid to show your age now. I got a few Methuselahs out here. Amen, remember God is dead? Well, I declare in you God is alive. He is well, and he's ready to save but he's also ready to judge for those to say, well, why is it so terrible if I reject Jesus? Because you have rejected the sacrifice of his son who died specifically for you. If you were the only person on this planet, remember one thing, Jesus came and he died for you. Amen. That's how much he loved you. And that's the problem when people reject Jesus Christ and then they sit here and scratch their head. Why should I be judged? Because you have unconfessed sin. Because you have unforgiven sin. But there is a remedy. There is an answer. And so few people choose to take that answer. And then they wonder why they're going to a Christless eternity that Bible calls a place called hell. A place of eternal judgment. You people say, I don't believe in hell. Well, that's your wagon. You can pull it. But that doesn't make it so. Amen? There is a literal hell just like there's a literal heaven. In fact, for every three times God, uh, one time God spoke about heaven, three times he warned about hell, so there must be a real hell. So if you're going to believe in heaven, you've got to believe in a real hell. Amen? And then people say, well, I don't believe a loving God would send anybody to hell. Well, you know what? Matthew 25, 41 said, hell was prepared for the devil and his angels. It was never prepared for man. Man, God always had one thing in mind for you and for me, to spend eternity with Jesus Christ. People say, I don't think God will send you to hell. I now tell them, you won't. You yourself will send you to hell when you reject Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Let's look at some more. A final tribulation, the Bible talks about seven years. If you read the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter 9, starting with verse 24, it talks about a seven-year tribulation. It talks about weeks, 70 weeks. And what it's talking about, you'll find this in Leviticus chapter 25, 1 through 8. They had Levitical Sabbath years. And soon there will be a seven-year tribulation. But praise God, you will not be there to experience it if you love Jesus Christ, amen? How many of you, does that excite you a little bit? A little bit? Look at these pruned faces, what's the matter? Half of you, are you what are you, the frozen chosen? Amen! We're going to heaven. We won't face the Antichrist. We won't hire people all the time. This guy's the Antichrist, that guy's the Antichrist. You're not gonna be here to see the Antichrist. You're gonna be with Jesus. I'm not looking for the Antichrist. I am looking for the Christ. Amen. 
Stop worrying about this guy and that guy and this. They've gone through the Pope. They've gone through the King of Spain. They've gone through Henry Kissinger. They've gone through you name it. And every time Mussolini, Hitler, they're always saying that's the Antichrist. I say, brothers and sisters, I won't know and I don't care who the Antichrist is. What I care about is do I know Jesus Christ? Amen. Hallelujah, amen. If you do worry on who the Antichrist is, you're in bad shape because that means you're probably going to be around here to see him in action. Not me, I'm going to be in heaven one day. How about you? Amen. Let's go on. Jeremiah 30, verse 7, a very crucial verse that talks about this great day. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it, and it is the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. Hallelujah. Amen. You and I will be saved out of it. Read Revelations 3.10. Uh, the church that will be taken out at that time because they love the Lord Jesus Christ. You need to ask yourself today, do you love Jesus Christ? Do you love him enough to accept him? Do you love him enough to obey him? Do you love him enough to follow him? Do you love him enough to proclaim his name? Are you willing to go out and say, I love Jesus Christ and I want to share the gospel with every creature? That's what Christianity is about. And that's what you've got to ask yourself. In Daniel 12, 1, it says this, At that time Michael shall stand up, that great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that time. And at that time your people shall be delivered, everyone who is found written in the book of life. All of you that have accepted Jesus Christ are written in the book of life. Hallelujah. Amen. If you're not written in the book of life, that's because you have not accepted the Lamb who wrote the book. See, the day you got saved, the day you accepted Jesus as personal Savior, you got written in the Lamb's book of life. And you were sealed unto the day of redemption. Ephesians 4.30 says, Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you were sealed unto the day of re redemption. Second uh, Corinthians 1.22 says, We are sealed unto that glorious day. And you know who does the sealing? Jesus Christ himself. People say, Wow, who can unwrap me? UPS? <laughs> Jesus is that seal. And he's the only one that can open up the seal of eternal life. Isn't it nice to know that you don't hold God as much as God holds you? Yes. Amen? Amen? That's what the word of God teaches. In Matthew 24, 21, it says this. For then there shall be a great tribulation. Not just tribulation. John prophesies that there will be tribulation. But such has not been since the beginning of the world until this time. Get this part, no, nor ever shall be. It's not just general tribulation, it is the great tribulation that the Bible warns about. It will be seven years, but praise God, before in Revelations chapter four, verses one and two, you'll see the snatching of the way of the church. It's in 1 Thessalonians 4, 17. It's a Greek and Latin word, which means a catching away or a snatching away from, that's what happens to you and I. Hallelujah, amen. I thank God that I'm gonna see my Jesus one day. See, I don't fear the future because Jesus holds the future for me. How about you? A lot of people talk about, there have been movies about it and TV. I mean, Hollywood goes, hey, over Armageddon. But they always forget one thing, Jesus Christ. They forget salvation. They forget the blood atonement. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, let me tell you something. One day, when they least expect it, they're going to wish the God they had remembered it. Amen. The hope for believers. Let's talk about that. Not I've scared half of you to death over Armageddon. And you said, oh, what a delightful sermon that pastor preaches. Let me tell you something. I wouldn't have preached it if I didn't know there was a remedy. Amen? So many people say, I'm afraid of Armageddon. Well, let me tell you something. You better be afraid of God more. Be afraid of God, the one who is able to cast us into hell. But praise God for the one who takes us to heaven. 
one day. But there's only one way. John 14, 6, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Acts 4, 12 says, Neither is there salvation in any other name given among heaven whereby we must be saved. People say that's one way thinking. I say, you're right. He's God. It's one way thinking. It's his way or the highway. I like the heavenly highway. How about you? Amen. You see, you can't get to heaven through good works. You can't get to heaven by joining the church. You can't get to heaven by being baptized. You can't be going to heaven being goody-goody. There's only one way you can get to heaven in his name is Jesus Christ. You want to avoid Armageddon? Accept Jesus Christ today. Amen. You want to go through the seven-year tribulation? Reject Jesus Christ today. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, he talks about that chapter, talks about the Antichrist and coming, the son of perdition. You'll find that and, and talk about him in that. But you don't have to worry about him because you have Jesus Christ in your heart. Praise God. Let's see what that hope is. 2 Peter 2.9. Read along with me. Then the Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust under punishment for the day of judgment. Did you get the first part? He knows how to deliver the godly out of, get that word, out of, not of, through, but out of temptation. Amen? I don't know what crisis you're going through. I don't know what sin you're struggling with. We all struggle with sin. But I tell you the remedy, his name is Jesus. Amen? You want to have peace which passes all understanding? You want to be able to say, Philippians 4, 4, rejoice, I say, always rejoice. Well, there's only one way of doing it. If you have the Prince of Peace in your heart. Amen? People say, you Christians, you're always happy. We should be. Amen. Well, some Christians are semi-happy. I've been around some grumpy Christians. You ever been around grumpy Christians? Boys walking around like this. I love Jesus. I'm saved. Really? Let me tell you something. I rejoice because I'm going to heaven. I rejoice because I know my future. How about you? Amen. And we need to understand. We need to smile and rejoice because you're saved. You have nothing to worry about if you love Jesus because he Loves you. Revelations 3.10, that verse I told you. Listen carefully to this one. Because you have kept my command to persevere, I also will keep you from the hour of trial, which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. That's why I'm pre-tribulation. That verse, one of many right there. Let's read it carefully again. Because you have kept my command to persevere, I will also keep you from the hour. You won't be here during that hour, hallelujah, amen, to test those who dwell on earth. You're going to be in heaven. Amen. I don't know about you, but I kind of looking forward to heaven. You ever wonder what heaven's going to be like? No headaches, no back aches, no toe aches, no pastor aches. Watch it, watch it. Watch them nasty children. Let me tell you something. I love Jesus. How about you? You know, people say, I'm afraid of the future. I'm not. I love. I know where I'm going. And it's not through my good works. I'd be finished in five minutes. How about you? But see, Jesus saved you. Karen saved you. He loved you. Loved Anna. Loved uh, John here. He even loved Lynn. And he even loves Dave. That's enough way to make your old happy face smile. Look at him. Amen? I tell you, there's nothing. I, I always get excited about being saved. Amen? See, I don't go to church because I have to. I go to church because I want to. I don't pray because I have to. I pray because I want to. I don't read my Bible anymore because I have to. I read the Bible because I want to. Because I want to know a little more about Jesus than I did before. I always love these Christians. They say, oh, I have a Bible. Do you ever read it? Well, occasionally. They, uh, somebody once said you dust off all the Bibles in America. We'd have the greatest dust storm in history. <laughs> Having a Bible is one thing. Reading it and studying it's another. Amen? Don't you want to learn more about your Savior? Don't you want to learn more about heaven? Say amen. amen. Well, let me tell you something. Read also about hell. 
and then thank God you're not going there. Luke chapter 16 gives a great story. And it's not a parable as many have thought because nowhere in parables did God ever use specific names. In Luke 16, he mentions the name Lazarus. Let me tell you, it's scary. Read it sometime. If you don't believe in hell, you will after you read that chapter. And then you'll want to avoid it. No hope for believers. Or unbelievers, I'm sorry. No hope for unbelievers. Let me read this. 2 Thessalonians 1, 7 through 9. Don't take my word for it. Take the word of God. And to give you who are troubled rest with us when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire taking vengeance on those, listen carefully, who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. These shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. That's a bit scary, isn't it? By the way, that everlasting destruction is not Jehovah Witness stuff, annihilation. It's talking everlasting destruction, everlasting punishment if you get into the Greek. So listen carefully, brothers. Are people alert in hell? Do they, are they consciously alive in torment? Yes, they are. Are those in heaven in conscience, bliss, and heavenly happiness? Yes, they are. Heaven is a real place. Hell is a real place. But soon Armageddon. Do you know many years ago China bragged that they could field a 200 million man army? Read Revelations. They give the exact number of 200 million. Amen. China right now is building a super highway through the Himalayas right to the Middle East. China is active. Everything centers around Israel. But God will divinely protect Israel. But you know what? God will divinely protect you as well. Hallelujah. We're going to be in the battle of Armageddon, but we're going to be on the winning side because we're riding back with Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. The final victory. I love this part. How many of you read a book, Love Happy Endings? You ever read a book hoping for a sad ending? Any of you morbid? All right, just one check. Let me tell you. Revelations 19, 14, and 15. And the armies in heaven, get that part right there, in heaven clothed in fine linen. Who's that? White and clean. That's the saints, hallelujah, amen. Followed him on white horses. Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, and with, the, and with it he should strike the nations, and he himself will rule them with a rod of iron. He himself treads the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. But verse 14 is the baby clothed in fine linen. It's not talking about angels there. He's talking about the saints. If you don't believe me, look at Isaiah 61.10. We're clothed in the white robe of righteousness through Jesus Christ. Isaiah 1.18 says, Though our sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Amen. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad of that? Amen. You're all pure as white as snow. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't you see me pure as white as snow? <laughs> Don't say a word. <laughs> Amen. What else does the Bible say about this great battle? Revelations 19, 19 through 21. And I saw the beast. The beast is the Antichrist. The kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war, make war against him who sat on the horse and against his army. Think about that. The stupidity of man making war against God. And yet it started right at the fall of the Garden of Eden. And man has been making war against God ever since. Now which army you want to be in? That army or God's army? Duh. Let's go on. What does the Bible say? Then the beast was captured and with him the false prophet who worked signs in his presence in which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. 
And these two were cast alive into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone. Now, don't tell me there's no such thing as hell. When you read lake of fire, burning with brimstone. I don't know about you, but mama didn't raise no fools. I'd rather go to heaven, kind of avoid that place, wouldn't you? And then the Bible goes on to say, and the rest were killed with a sword which proceeded from the mouth of him who sat on the horse, and all the birds were filled with their flesh. Oh, what a terrible day that will be. The battle of Armageddon is real. Hell is real. Judgment is real. But salvation is real. Heaven is real. But it's your decision which one you want to go through. Amen. In conclusion, the sword that comes from the mouth of Jesus is his word. It was his word that created this universe. It is the word of God which will save you. And it will be the word of God that will destroy the wicked at the end of this age. How many of you believe in the Bible? Amen. How many of you believe in his word? And we need to live it. We need to believe in it. And we need to put Jesus Christ first place in our, our lives. Last verse, Matthew 24, 44. Therefore you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour which you do not expect. Armageddon is real. Not the Hollywood version. Not the TV version. Not the fantasy version, but the Bible version. And I don't want to see anybody have to go through it. If there's one thing you should always appreciate every day when you wake up in the morning is that you're saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. It matters not pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib. I don't get into those silly battles. What's more important that I do, are you ready? When Jesus comes back. Are you ready? If Jesus were to come tonight. Are you saved? Or are you not saved? Are you not sure? I'm going to give you a moment to make sure. Because your soul. Your life. Your future. Depends on it. Let's stand.